Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pan roasted chicken breast. That's right, it's come to my attention that some of you, even many of you, are overthinking chicken, which I do not advise. In fact, when it comes to chicken, as well as, well, pretty much everything, including life, it is generally a better strategy to underthink versus trying to do too much. So keep that in mind as we go through this very simple tutorial. And we're going to start off with one of the main challenges to doing this dish properly using the right kind of chicken breast. Because ideally what we want here is a boneless but skin-on chicken breast, which are really hard to find at the store. Generally our choices are boneless skinless chicken breast, which as you know I'm not a big fan of. Or you can get these which are called split breasts, which are skin-on but still have some of the breast bone and rib cage attached. So what we're going to do is use these and turn them into exactly what we want. And like any of the boning you've seen me do in these videos, the technique is exactly the same. Find and feel where the bone attaches to the meat, and by simply using a sharp knife pressed against the bone, all right, angled towards the bone, angled towards those ribs, not the meat, we can fairly easily cut that away. And this is actually easier than I'm making it look, because mostly I'm trying to not block the camera with my arm. But I'm simply cutting a little at a time, angling the knife towards the bone, not the meat, and it's really not too much trouble to cut that right out. And once we've successfully sliced off that rib cage and or part of the breastbone, there's one more thing to check. In the top of the breast, the fatter end of the breast, you want to feel around because often a piece of the wishbone is still in there, which I can feel right here. So I'm going to use the tip of my knife and just cut that out. And then last but not least, once we have it deboned, if we want, we can remove that chicken fillet, also known as the chicken finger, which is that strip of meat sort of attached to the breast by a thin membrane. And more often than not, I just leave that on there. But the breast does cook a little more evenly if you take it off. And of course, those are great to freeze and then use to fry up for chicken strips. And at that point, you're free to do any kind of random trimming you want. And once that's been completed, we can go ahead and season these up and start cooking. And this technique produces such a flavorful chicken, you really don't need a lot of seasoning. Salt is mandatory, though. So I'm going to very generously season both sides with kosher salt. And then just because I saw it sitting there, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And believe it or not, that's it. At this point, we can head over to the stove and start our pan roasting. So what I like to do is heat olive oil in a heavy-duty skillet over medium-high heat until it's nice and hot and starts to shimmer. And we're going to place our chicken breast in skin side down. And we'll just let that sear on medium-high heat for about five or six minutes to get a really beautiful crust going on that skin side. And yes, I do need to level my oven. My oil is kind of settling on one side, which is not ideal. Although I'm not really sure if that's the oven or the house, or it could just be San Francisco, I don't know. And by the way, while we're waiting for that skin to crisp up, if you do happen to have any fresh herb around, I to sprinkle a little bit on this meat side. So I had a little bit of tarragon around, because that was going in the dressing of what I'm gonna serve this over. But a little rosemary would also be nice. Some thyme, oh man, that would be really nice. And like I said, we're going to let that sear for about five or six minutes, at which point we will flip these over and reduce our heat to medium. And then all we're going to do is let that cook on medium until it's cooked the rest of the way through. Almost. Ideally, I want to serve this with an internal temp of about 155 to 160, but I want to start our pan sauce when it reaches 150, so we can kind of finish the chicken in the sauce. And if you've done a lot of these, you can go by feel, but I do recommend you use a thermometer. It's much safer and more accurate. And once we've hit that target temp, or you're pretty sure they're just about done, we'll finish up in a very primitive but effective sauce. So I'm going to toss in about two tablespoons of any kind of vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar today because I'm going to serve this over an apple salad, but anything's going to work. And we're also going to toss in a couple tablespoons of cold butter and swirl all that together. So what we have in here is the olive oil that we started with, plus we now have rendered chicken fat and butter and vinegar. So really the sauce is going to be nothing more than three fats and an acid. And while that would be the worst barbershop quartet name ever, it really does make for a fantastic pan sauce. And all we'll do is kind of toss that around until our butter's melted, at which point, assuming the chicken's done, we can turn off the heat. And in just a few minutes it took us to make that sauce, your chicken has probably gone from 150 to 155, which I think is ideal. Perfectly safe, yet still juicy and moist. So let me go ahead and switch to a spoon, so I can do the old gratuitous spoon the sauce over the chicken shot. From not one, but two different angles is I asked the rhetorical question, how good does that look? And it's probably worth noting that you can easily switch out the oils and the fats in this, the spices, as well as the vinegar or acid you use. And this technique will still work exactly as shown. So long story short, I just showed you like a thousand recipes. But anyway, that's it. 
our perfect pen roasted chicken's done. And other than the very obvious check for seasoning, we are ready to eat. And normally I would serve that up next to some mashed potatoes or rice or pasta, you know, the usual array of evil carbs. But this time I decided to slice it up and serve it over a Waldorf salad. And while I do enjoy this with the traditional sides, there's something about that combination of that hot buttery chicken over that cold, crisp, sweet salad that really is amazing. And that's just not any Waldorf. That's my famous celery root Waldorf, which I will be showing you how to make in the next video. So stay tuned for that. But enough about the salad. Let's get into that juicy, perfect pan roasted chicken. Just so moist, so flavorful. I mean, if I knew how to eat on camera, this would have looked perfect. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not adding any kind of moist, juicy chicken photo filter on this. That's what your chicken's gonna look like if you cook it with the skin on and don't overcook it. You're gonna get something that's so moist, so juicy, so flavorful, your friends and family will hardly believe you made it. No offense, but this technique really does work wonders. So anyway, that's it. Just a quick little tutorial on how I like to pan roast chicken. Like I said, stay tuned for the Waldorf salad recipe. And in the meantime, I really do hope you give this easy and incredibly delicious technique a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.